right, how's everybody doing out there in Math Magic Land today? This is Mr. Muscarella coming at you. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at polynomials and their intervals for increasing and decreasing, as well as maximums and minimums, or relative extrema, all thanks to Desmos. So thank you, Desmos, for starring in our show today. Now, when we go ahead and put a function into Desmos, we're, Desmos is super cool because when you do this one thing in Desmos, when you click, right, when you click on a function, it is going to light up and there's gonna be these gray dots that show up all over the place. Now, sometimes those gray dots are gonna be really easy to kind of know what's going on. So this guy right here and this guy right here, they are going to be our intercepts. So the one that goes on the vertical line, of course, we know that's called the y-intercept. And the one that goes on the horizontal line is the x-intercept. So those are going to be our x and y-intercepts that are told to us. But now there's these two other points uh, that uh, Desmos can talk to us about. And Desmos is really cool. And these spots are going to be maximum or minimums. Now, whether they're called an absolute or a relative max or min depends on if there's stuff higher or lower than it. So let's take a look at the one that's on the left first. Now this would be a minimum, but since there is parts that are lower, there's parts of this function that are lower than where that spot is, this just is called a relative minimum. And you can just abbreviate relative REL. Same thing with the other piece over here, this other spot, which is on top of a hill. That's kind of the way I, I, I refer to it. So if that's on top of a hill, that's going to be a maximum. Now, if that's the highest point on the entire curve, then it'd be the absolute max. This is not, so it's just called a relative max, all right? Because there's parts on that curve that are higher. But anytime you have a change in your slopes, and we'll talk about that in a minute, that's where you're going to have these extreme of these maximums and minimums. So Desmos tells us maximums, minimums, as well as intercepts. So that's pretty cool. So it tells us those things. Now, sometimes, you know, we'll have a function like this. So, um, you know, here's, here's one spot right here. That's the top of a hill, but there's parts higher. So again, this would be called a relative max because there's parts higher. Now, these two guys down here, so this spot right here and this spot right here, there's nothing lower than those. Those y values would be the same. So those would be called my absolute uh, minimums. So I have absolute minimums when there's nothing lower than that point on the curve. Now, similarly, if that curve were flipped upside down, these two spots, these two hills that are at the top, the x value, the x and y point coordinates that make up that point, there's nothing higher than those, so they would be called an absolute max. So I've got absolute minimums if there's nothing lower, and absolute maximums if there's nothing higher. But again, if there's stuff that's higher or lower, then that's going to be called a relative max or min. So this guy over here that's kind of in this valley in between these two crests here, that would be called a relative maximum. Or not maximum, sorry. Ha, I'm thinking too fast here. That'd be a relative min. All right. So that's a, you know, thank you Desmos for helping us out with that. So when you click on a function, it'll give you those values. So that's pretty cool. Desmos totally hooks us up with the actual absolute extrema, you know, whether it's absolute max or min or relative max or min, Desmos hooks us up with that as well as your X and Y intercepts. Now let's talk about our increasing and decreasing intervals. Cause again, Desmos is gonna hook us up with those pieces, which is really cool. When you're in other more advanced courses, you'll learn other techniques for finding these. But for right now, we will use Desmos. So the very first thing of course is think of slope. Slope is the way to go. And there's gonna be two types of slope that we'll be thinking about. One is gonna be a positive slope and one is gonna be a negative slope. So those are gonna be our two slopes that we'll consider. Now always use X values for, for the max or min and then always use soft brackets. So let's kind of analyze some things here. We're gonna take a look at our curve. Now if I start on the leftmost side, so all the way out here is negative infinity, and I start coming up, 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 up this curve, you know, that generally has a positive slope, which means along this side, and again, um, I'm just gonna write it INC for increasing, all right? So I'm gonna be increasing all the way up all the way up until I get to that the top of that hill, if you will. And then at this spot, so again, let's kind of review a little vocab here. So that's gonna be an absolute max. So I'm gonna turn around at my absolute max and then I'm gonna start decreasing. So on the other side of that, I'm decreasing because I'm going down, down, down until I get to this spot right here, this valley, if you will. So at that spot, that's going to be a relative, that's going to be a relative min because there are spots that are lower. So that's going to be my relative min and then I'm going to turn around and then I'm going to increase again. 
So then I'm going to turn around. I'm going to increase and go up, 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 up because I've got a positive slope here between the, those x values. And then it's going to turn around here at this relative maximum. Again, it's not an absolute max because there are values, there are y values that are higher. So it's only a relative max and that's where we have that. But then I turn around and then all of a sudden it's going to go back down again, go down, down, down in a negative fashion. So anytime I've got those changes and increasing and decreasing. That's what, what we're going to talk about for our extrema. So let's just identify where we had our positive slopes, okay? So I started at negative infinity and went all the way to the tippy top. And again, I'm using the x values. So negative 0 0.935. And then I had another increasing interval. So I'm going to put a little u with that for all the way from 1.962 to the x value of 4.224. So those are gonna be my two intervals where my function is increasing because the slopes are positive there. Now I've got a decreasing slope. I've got decreasing slopes. I'm gonna just kind of change colors here. So my decreasing is gonna go right here and right there. So again, we're using the x values when we talk about the, um, the intervals. So I'm gonna be decreasing. I'm gonna be decreasing from that x value of negative 0 0.935 all the way down to 1.962. So that's going to be one of my intervals that I'm decreasing. Then I have a negative slope also from uh, 4.224, 4.224. Now here's where you have to be really careful uh, because towards the right, so I'm starting here at this x value right here at 4.224 and I'm going to the right. So to the right is infinity. And a lot of people will make a mistake here because the function is decreasing, it's going down and they'll think about it like the y value. So be careful there, make sure that you put positive infinity for that. So that's going to be my intervals of increasing and decreasing. And if there's more than one, then we just put a little u in between it for union or or. Now, here is what I call the phrase that pays. So for extrema, and this is gonna be like English class, you're gonna to have to write this out. And however many extrema are, you're gonna to need to write that many sentences. But here's the general, general format. And the format is this, there is a blank. So you're gonna to have to tell what type of extrema it is. And in that blank, you could have an absolute uh, max or a min, or you could have a relative max or min. You could have either of those options there. So there's four options that could go in that first blank. Now there's only one y value and only one x value. So when you get that, you'll only use that. And then in the next two blanks, you know, since the function changes, so we have to talk about how the slope changes or the function changes. Does it change from increasing to decreasing? All right, so uh, that is what we're gonna write. So let's take a look at our very, very first uh, piece here, our, our first extrema, and we've got an absolute max there. So what I want you to do is pause the video and write out that sentence on your own. Maybe it helps to type it out, whatever's going to work best for you. Uh, but go ahead and write out the sentence that would go along for that absolute max. So we're going to write that very first sentence right below that and do that. Then we're going to no write another sentence here for this relative min and then a third sentence for our relative max. So we're going to write three sentences. One, two, and three are going to deal with each one of those extrema. So go ahead and pause the video. Actually write out all three of them. Write out all three sentences. So basically copy what's there and then fill in the blanks. So pause the video and then come on back when you're ready and let's see how you rocked it out. All right, Cub Scouts, how did we do on that? Hopefully, so let me zoom in here a little bit. Hopefully you got all those pieces right. You're, you're solid on that and everything and it should be pretty straightforward stuff. So again, you're gonna list the type of extreme it is of whatever the Y value is at the X value. Since the function changes, then you just have to describe how. So you're gonna need to write out that sentence to get credit for your justifying, for justifying your your work there. And that's all you gotta do is explain how it changes. That is it. Now there's another example down here, example number two. So again, I want you to pause the video, fill in all the pieces on this, the positive slope, the increasing part, the decreasing part, as well as the extrema, fill in those values as well as writing your sentences. Now on this one, you know, we've only got two extrema here, so there'll only be two sentences, which is kind of cool in that. So pause the video, then come on back and let's see how you rolled with this one. All right, so let's see, how did we do with this piece? Hopefully, uh, you got all both the intervals correct. 
in there. So your positive, your increasing interval as well as your decreasing interval. And again, make sure that you use infinity and negative infinity appropriately. And then you justified your extrema correctly, talking about our relative min at of 1.872 at x equals 0.472. Now, and this is kind of a, a sticking point here too. Make sure you write the x equals. Don't leave off that x equals when you're uh, talking about the x value that you've got uh, your extrema at. So those are your two sentences that you've got for there and your intervals for increasing and decreasing. And that's it. So if it helps to draw that on your function, cool, do that, do that. All right, that's it for this video. So by now, you should be able to use Desmos. You know, I mean, these are pictures from functions in Desmos, but when you click on those pictures, they'll give you those values. So you should be able to analyze those and talk about the intervals for increasing and decreasing, as well as write down what any maxes and mins are and justify your work, justify your reasoning. All right, cool. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Make it a wonderful day, and I'll catch up with you later. Peace out, Cub Scouts.